What's going on everyone? It's Chris Guns and tomorrow night, middleweight championship on the line. A lot of people think the best middleweight in the world, Triple G, Gennady Golovkin taking on two-time middleweight title challenger, Mac the Knife, Matthew Macklin making his third attempt. He came up short in Germany against Felix Sturm where a lot of people thought he won. Then he gave the great Sergio Martinez a scare in a losing effort, in a valiant effort. He's hoping that that experience will pay off, and he's looking to make the third time a charm in Foxwoods on Saturday night. Let's check in with some of the best trainers in the game and see how they see the fight turning out on Saturday night and what Macklin's chances are. Ben oh. Batista, trainer of champion boxer Ava Knight. How's it going, Ben? Pretty good, man. I'm out here in uh, Los Angeles, about to be located in uh, Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, I've been going back and forth from the Bay Area to, to L.A. To, to Vegas, you know, uh, basically taking my father's man uh, where it's at. And now, um, basically, I'm in uh, Vegas now uh, doing my thing. I've been uh, working out at the uh, Mayweather Gym and over at Hit Factory. Yes. And so, you know, I'm waiting on 50 Cent Gym to open up, too, so I can check that out. You must be seeing Eddie Mustafa Muhammad all the time. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my man. Yeah, that's my man right there, man. Eddie's a cool cat, man. Yeah, don't uh, get cooler. Don't get cooler than Eddie. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, Eddie, man. You know, he's a champion, a champion, champion a trainer, and uh, just a good person. Yeah. Colin, because big fight going down on Saturday night. Middleweight champion. Some would say the best middleweight today, taking on a man who's getting his third shot at a belt. Mac the Knife, Matthew Macklin. How do you see the fight going, Ben? Well, uh, from what I understand, I, I really don't know too much about Macklin, but from what I uh, learned about him is that he's a, uh, he's a solid boxer. You know, he's a boxer. You know, it, you know, you know I, I guess you know, we don't have that much power, but he uh, takes a pretty good punch. And uh, he has a tremendous jab. Uh, so, you know, that's, really, that's all I really know about Macklin, but I know the Vodkin, uh, that, that boy is a monster. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Some people, some people ain't sold on him. How, how do you fight Golovkin? If, if you were in the corner of Matthew Macklin and he's got a great trainer and Buddy McGirt, how, how do you fight Triple G and, and someone who has that kind of power? Well, for one, you know, he has, uh, 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 Macklin has an upside, he has a good jaw for him stand, so he's going to definitely have to have one of those, you know, uh, to deal with for my because, you know, that boy is uh, packing a, a punch, and number two, you know, he's a good boxer, so, you know, he's got to be a good boxer, good jab, um, you know, against uh, Chipper G. So, you know, he has, he has the uh, uh, tangibles, you know, the tools, you know, to, uh, to be victorious, but, uh, but we'll see, you know, mm -hmm. time comes, the boxer, man, he's a, uh, he's a monster. Yeah, he's got a ton of power, but there's, there's a lot of guys out there who have power. What, what else does he do that makes him stand out? What, what makes him so effective? Well, you know, he, he, he's, um, he has a lot of experience. He's not no run out. People like him because, you know, he's in that pocket. You know, and, you know, that's for sale tickets, man, knockouts. And, you know, he's able to, you know, uh, to beat his opponents up, you know, and knock them out. So uh, that's why people love him. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, you know, um, it takes a tremendous person, you know, with a, um, a good jab, you know, good timing, you know, a good um, person with, you know, with uh, a good box with good feet and definitely a, a good chin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, need that. And Matthew Macklin had two other shots at the title, like I said. His first one, a lot of people thought he deserved the win. He went to Germany and fought Felix Sturm. A lot of people thought he deserved that decision. No surprise that he got robbed in Germany. And then he gave Sergio Martinez a scare, knocked him down in a losing effort. And as a trainer, you know you have to play psychologist at times. How do you... Expect the mindset of Macklin to be knowing what happened in his other two title defenses. Now he's going up against a, a, a monster in his prime. He fought the great Sergio Martinez, but Martinez doesn't have the power that he's going to be facing. How do you how do you help 
Macklin as far as his mind goes and not getting overwhelmed by the moment this time? Well, I don't think I don't think he's overwhelmed. I think you know, um, I think he, I definitely believe in himself. I believe that he has a ton of confidence, you know, um, in his in himself and his ability. Otherwise, he won't be fighting this guy. You know, um, takes a lot of heart, takes a lot of you know um, courage, you know, to get in there with Macklin. And I believe he, you know he has that. I believe that he does believe in himself and he believes in his ability. You know, he believes that you know he definitely can win. So you know. Uh, you know, with the fight against Sergio Martinez and Derek Stein, you know, um, seeing what he's able to accomplish, you know, uh, you know, he probably felt like he won those fights. So, uh, going into the fight, you know, he always feel like, you know, uh, you know, he's going in there with, you know, some pretty good momentum. Mm-hmm. And do you see any obvious weaknesses in Triple G that you would have Macklin exploit? I mean, I know you know he's got a good jab and stuff, but does he have a weakness? Does he have a weakness? Uh, I don't know yet, man. He ain't got good defense because he, he ain't got good defense. Oh, gosh, he ain't got good defense. Mm. You know, that's probably because he can take the punch, right? He comes in. He, he like, you know, he like the kids. His mentality is take the gifts. Oh, okay. His mentality is take the gifts. So, yeah. Yeah, my guy said he really ain't got. Hey, close the window. He ain't got good defense. Who's that? Who's there uh-huh. with you, man? Huh? Who's there with you? you got Aaron Cody, heavy metal, man. Okay, okay. Knows what he's talking about. <laughs> yeah, man. He said, he said Triple G ain't got a good defense. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I see Triple G, man. He, you know, he's very patient. He's very patient, you know what I mean? And, you know, he has a lot of experience. He knows what he brings to the table, and he knows what he's trying to accomplish. So, you know, he, he sets up his um, big punch very well. But in the process, yeah, he might be taking a whole lot of, um, um, he might take a whole lot of shots, you know what I'm saying? Because he's trying, trying to stay in that pocket to deliver that big one. And now it's time to put you on the spot. What do you see going down tomorrow night? Uh, tomorrow night, man, uh, man uh, Triple G. Triple G by knockout, I'm, I'm suspecting? Uh, yeah, knockout, man. If Triple G does win decisively and impressively, if you were his man, if you were in his corner, what would you want next for him? Would you want him to unify? Somebody like him and probably like Peter Quinn. <laughs> mm, that's, that's what I'm talking about. That, that would be a great fight. A lot of people say Sergio Martinez, but people are sleeping on Peter. Yeah, I like, um, yeah, you know, two big punches. I love them type of fights. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you seen uh, Beacon and that, and that Mexican cat go at it. You know, I mean, you know, hey, I just love them type of, as a fan, I just like to, you know, I'm from the hood, and I love, you know, I'm used to seeing street fights. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I, and I, you know, see, you know, I raised pit bulls, so growing up seeing, you know, pit bull fights and, you know, not saying that I see that now, but you know, I, but we just live in that type of society where we, you know, like to see that type of blood sport. You know, yeah. two guys just just lock it up and just shake at each other. So I think that'd be, that'd be, it'd be that kind of fight. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Man who knows what he's talking about. Great training. <laughs> I'm speaking as a fan, though. No. <laughs> as a as a fan, I would love to see that fight. You know what I mean? Yep. You speak for all fans. That's, that's the fight yeah. I want to see next. Maybe I wouldn't mind Sergio Martinez, but Peter Quillen, you know, you know, you're gonna have a fight, Peter Quillen against Golovkin for as long as it goes. Gonna be nice. Yeah. Ben Batista, appreciate your analysis. Anytime, man. Anytime, man. I'm out here in L.A., man, having fun. We got the B.T. Wars going on this weekend, man. I'll tell you, it's I raining. Good boxing out here, man. We just out here having fun, man. But yeah. right on for calling, man. You know, anytime, man. You know, uh, it's all good. Get at me. It is raining cats and dogs here in Connecticut, but I know it's always sunny in Southern California. Thank you, Ben. Hey, man, it's hot as shit out there in Vegas, man. <laughs> 100 degrees, man, every day, man. It's crazy. There's no escape. I'm getting used to it, though. I'm getting used to the heat, though. Let's see if, if Triple G could bring the heat to Matthew Macklin on Saturday night. Thank you, Ben. All right, right on, man. The great Eddie Mustafa Muhammad. Big fight going down on Saturday, Eddie. 
middleweight champion. A lot of people think he's the best middleweight in the world today. You got Triple G taking on Mac the Knife, Matthew Macklin. How do you see the fight going, Eddie? That's going to be a great fight. You know, Macklin is a fighter that has tons of heart. And he can crack a little bit. Mm -hmm. We never saw Triple G get hit to how he's going to react to a, a great punch. Yeah. Macklin is the type of guy that's going to provide that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Macklin's going to win, but he's going to present a, a stern test. A stern test. And he has a great trainer, a great teacher in Buddy McGirt. That's right. <laughs> Buddy's showing him all the ropes and what to do. And again, Triple G also has a great teacher. Mm -hmm. you know? Abel Sanchez. It, it, Abel is a, is a great teacher. Yes, he is. You know, I, you know I, I, I'm the type of guy, I know uh, Triple G is a, I think it's eighth of his favorite. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be a great fight. Yeah, and it, I'm, not, I'm not the type of guy that's going to pick the winner. But all I can tell you, Chris, is going to be a great fight. Yeah, and, and I was on a conference call with, with when, when Buddy was there with Matthew Macklin, and Buddy said that as soon as he heard that Abel Sanchez was in Triple G's corner, he knew he had to raise his game as a trainer and, and bring out the, the deeper trainer brain. To, to You have to. You know, with a guy like Abel, I mean, he's a teacher. Abel's been around for, for a while, you know, and he's a, a bona fide teacher of the game. Yes, he is. You know, then you have uh, Buddy McGirt, who's also a bona fide teacher of the game. So you got two great boxing minds that are coming together. You know, you got two fighters that, you know, one has got to prove himself all over again in Matthew, and Triple G, G just steamrolling everybody. Yeah. And it's, it's, I just, like I said, it's going to be a great fight. I'm not going to pick a winner, but I won't be surprised if Macklin uh, eats out a decision. Mm -hmm. So if you were in the corner of Matthew Macklin, knowing the kind of power Triple G got, how would you, how would you have him fight? And I know you know Buddy McGirt well, knows you so well, he calls you Josie Wales. <laughs> I know, oh, I know, yeah. Buddy's got. A, um, I know, Buddy's got a good game plan. What would your game plan be if you got Macklin as your fighter? Oh, we gonna box and step side to side because Triple G is very effective coming forward. Mm -hmm. And we go side to side and move around, make him use those legs, and you you gotta have a great jab to keep him off you. He gets in close, you tie him up, spin him around, and push him off back into the middle of the ring. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do with a guy like that. Mm -hmm. you know, keep him in the middle of the ring and keep him circling. Yeah. Have you seen weaknesses in Golovkin's game? He, 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 gets, he can get hit. He can get mm -hmm. hit. No doubt about it. Yeah, so defense is... I saw him get hit. So, I mean, he hasn't been hit by a solid puncher like Macklin. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if he can hit by Macklin solid, I mean, he can pour some stir in the situation. Yeah, and... Having lost his other two championship attempts, he went to Germany. A lot of people think he deserved to win, but still went against him uh, in his loss against Felix Sturm. And then he fought Sergio Martinez, the other guy that, that who, whoever doesn't think Triple G is the best middleweight in the world, the rest of them think Sergio Martinez is still the best. He's a great fighter, but he, he did enough to scare Sergio and still come away with the loss as, as a great trainer. You, you do have to get in the mind of your fighter. How do you turn yeah. it around and, and make him believe in himself going into this fight with this caliber. killer? God, oh, Lord, listen. I mean, you're fighting for the biggest prize in the division, and this is your dream to become world champion. So what you have to do is listen to your teacher because he's been there and done that. Yep. And he's got a great one. That's the whole key. He, exactly. So, you know, just have confidence and faith in your teacher. She's going to take you to the promise line. She's got to listen. And you have to be in tip top condition. Mm -hmm. There's no mistakes allowed in this one. Yeah. 
and you already said you're not picking the winner. That was my ne that was my last question to you, pretty much. What you don't want to pick a winner, but what do you see happening tomorrow night? A great fight. I see a great fight. Yeah, me too. I see a great fight, and I see two great minds coming together. Yeah. Well, let, let me ask you this though, Eddie. I, I I did plan for that to be my last question to you, but I, I just thought of another one, so I'm just gonna throw it out to you. What what is it that that oh man th th there's so many possibilities in, in this fight that I'm thinking and early on when the fight first starts what are you going to be looking for as far as I, I'm going to be looking for Matthew to establish his jab and, and, and little things in boxing such as faith mm -hmm. I mean little things faith, yes. double phantom see where he's coming from let him ex expose himself. Mm -hmm. So faith is a lost art in boxing. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you add faith to there, and I mean, this could, it can be a great uh, thing when you just add things that people forgot to do. You're so right, Eddie, and, and I noticed that in the Malignaggi Broner fight early on. Paulie Malignaggi was throwing lots of feints, and it totally threw Broner off guard. Fourth round came around, Paulie stopped throwing the feints, and it became much easier for Broner. So the feints exactly, do a exactly. lot. Exactly. I mean, the, the simple, very simple thing that a lot of these uh, trainers and fighters forget, the little thing that got them to where they at now, the top of the, the game. Yeah. Yep. And this is really the last question. If Triple G wins decisively and impressively, if he does beat Macklin easy and easier than Sergio Martinez did, what would you want to see next for Triple G? I want to see him and Chavez. I mean, that's the only fight out there, basically. So not Martinez, not Peter Quillen, but Chavez? Oh, no, that's, that's actually... Chavez, because Chavez brings it. Yes. Yep. You know, Chavez is not going nowhere. You know, you don't have to look for him. Mm-hmm. You know, he's going to bring it. So that's the fight I would, I would like to see between those two combat, combatants. Me too. You know, Me too. Now there's a triple G. That's, that's the fight. That is a fight. The Mexican against the Ukrainian. That'd be great. Exactly. That'd be great. And and Chavez has that chin. And Styles make fights. So it would be a. a it's correct. It'd be a war. Thank you, Eddie. Always good to hear your insight. Appreciate it. You got it, buddy. Anytime. Anytime. Uh, I am now training um, Julian Love. Yes. That's exactly what Jay Leon Love needs. I, I just um, yeah, I, we started two weeks ago, and uh, tomorrow is his uh, court, his day of appearance with the uh, athletic commission, Nevada athletic commission tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go there, you know, and just show support, and uh, you know, I hope everything goes well. Man, he, I, I keep up with Jay Leon, and I, I heard today that he's suffering from a broken heart. <laughs> and, and now he's got that thing hanging over his head tomorrow. Well, listen, those things happen. That's so it. The girl left him. Ah, oh, man. Oh, there's kiss and makeup. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what they need to do. Kiss and makeup, and everything will be all right. She's a, she's a good girl. She's mm -hmm. a real good girl. Yeah. Well, I hope the best for Jay Leon tomorrow. And next time I talk to you, I'm going to make sure we catch up on Jay Leon. You got it. it. Marshall Enzer. Big fight going down on Saturday, Saturday night. Middleweight champ. Some some people think he's the best middleweight today. Taking on a man who's getting his third shot at a belt. Mac the knife, Matthew Macklin. How do you see the fight going, Marshall? Um, I don't know. In my opinion, I think that uh, that Govekian's a little bit too strong for him. You know, and plus he's a European fighter. I don't know if he's tuned into fighting guys. You know, from the states, knowing that Govekian has such a great amateur record and you know, did so good in the Olympics, you know, I don't see too many people standing in the way of him unless you get a guy, you know, um, you know, Andre Ward or somebody like that that's going to fight him on a slick basis, you know, but anyone that seems to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with him, he's just too strong. If you're in the corner of Matthew Macklin and, and he's got a great trainer in Buddy McGirt, how, how do you fight Triple G and, and someone who has that kind of firepower that he brings? Um... I don't know. In my, in my opinion, he's got to have great lateral movement. You know, um, a guy like that that comes forward 
and punches the way he does. He kind of reminds me of Matisse mm-hmm. in that sense. And uh, I think, you know, a great lateral movement and a, j- and a great jab is the only way to stay away from him. And then, you know, when you see, see an opening, throw the punch and see if you can counter and get him. But other than that, I don't know any other way to beat him. Yeah, you, you said he, he reminds you of Matisse. I, I think it's like... Uh, I was thinking Matisse too, but I think it's like a combination of Matisse and Kostjezu. I see a lot of Kostjezu in him too. Yeah, definitely. I see that too in him. He even looks like Kostjezu.